Hello brothers and sisters, I'm making this video for those who believe that you can still be gay and get into heaven, transvestite or otherwise. The Messiah said he has come in the volume of the whole book. That means from Genesis to Revelations, none of it has been done away with. Now, the laws of Moses rolled into the new covenant in which Christ himself did add to some of those laws, but he never took away any of the laws of Moses, but he added to them. And that is what is in the new covenant. And for those who are still thinking that the laws of the Most High is dead, if we go to Matthew's chapter 5, verse 17, he clearly explains to us, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So he did start fulfilling all the things that was written about him in the laws and in the prophets. But they are not all fulfilled yet. There are still many things that are written in the laws, which is the Torah and the Tanakh, which is the prophets, that are still not fulfilled. Then he goes on further to reassure you that the laws are not done away with. He says, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Everything is not fulfilled, so going by scripture, we know that heaven and earth is still here. We haven't witnessed no second coming. We haven't witnessed heaven and earth passing away. So the law is still here. It just remade through Christ now instead of Moses. Um, and if you go to Romans chapter 2 verse 11 through 13 we read for there is no respect of persons with God for as many as have sinned without law shall perish without law so you uh, who've been trained through the Christian church or Christianity itself that the law is done away with there is no law you who are without law shall also perish without law this is what's written in the word and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law and if you continue on sinning in this law you're going to be judged by the law for not the hearers of the law are just before God but the doers of the law shall be justified Now, what about grace and mercy? Yes, this is a grace period which many has misconstrued into being a time to party. When the, No, this is a grace period given to you by the mercy of the Most High so that you can understand this scripture, understand this book by studying yourself to be approved and following the ways of the Most High by obeying his commandments and his laws and statutes and commandments walking in them and once you put on those ways and they become a part of your life you free yourself from the laws of sin and death now i mentioned all that so that we can go back into genesis for those who believe that all this is done away with Go back into Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our own likeness, and, like them have and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. 
And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moved upon the earth. So the Most High gave a commandment when he made male, male and female, that they should multiply upon the earth and replenish the earth, fill the earth with people, with male and female. There is no commandment in there for man and man to come together, a woman and woman to come together. Go to Exodus chapter 20. No, Genesis chapter 19, verses 1. Genesis chapter 19. And there came two angels to Sodom. Y'all know the story about Sodom and Gomorrah? Most of us do. Where Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed for its wickedness. Let's read on. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with, him, with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and you shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house, and he he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and did, they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, come past the house round. That means they surrounded the house, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which you came in to thee this night? Basically saying, Where are the men that's in your house? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. And Lot went out at the door unto them, and shut the door after him, and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Now this word, known, when you go back to chapter 5, it says, Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. This means they wanted to have sex with them. They wanted to know them. Back to verse 8. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known man. That means they, they haven't had sex with man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you and do you to them as it is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. Now Lot was offering, willing to offer up his own two virgin daughters then let the men come in and try to take the angels of the Lord because those two men that was in his, house, in his house were two angels of the Lord. And so the angels brought Lot, his wife, and his two daughters out of the city and the city was destroyed by those two angels for their wickedness and for their whoredoms for their fornication and this is where the term Sodom Sodomite come from from Sodom men sleeping with men women being with women this is more evidence on whether Gays can be allowed into the kingdom. Now, this is a judgment passed upon Sodom and Gomorrah as an example for us. Let's go to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12. It says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So, if you have a, a daddy and a daddy, how can you honor the father and the mother? Or you have a mommy and a mommy, 
That's confusion to a child. It draws confusion. And the Most High is not the author of confusion. We know who confusion belonged to. And that's Satan and the devil. Who didn't convince the whole world that it is okay to be gay. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 18. And we're going to get into the New Testament for those who are just New Testament Christians. Don't want to believe in the Old Testament. Where everything in the New Testament comes from the Old Testament. The Old Testament complements the New Testament and the New Testament complements the Old. They both go hand in hand. You cannot take away one without the other. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. You can't get no clearer than that. This is one of the commandments that the Most High asks you to obey. And he tells you all through the New Testament, obey his commandments. That is plain and clear. I don't have to repeat that one. So let's move forward to Leviticus chapter 20. In verse 13. 20 and 13 says. If a man also lie with mankind. As he lieth with a woman. Both of them have committed an abomination. Now, here's the judgment for that. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Now, during this time of grace, we're not supposed to put them to death. The judgment is withheld for now. That doesn't mean it's gone. It's withheld to give you that chance to repent and turn from that abominable sin that you're committing. This this is what grace is supposed to be about which the churches are not clearly explaining to everyone grace and the dispensation of grace is God's mercy to give you a chance to study his word obey his commandments and turn from your wicked sins 1 Corinthians chapter 6 everyone 1 Corinthians Okay, well, 1 Corinthians, where you at? 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9 says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? This is in the New Testament. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, that means homosexuals, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Plain and simple instructions and commandments right here in the New Testament those who are gay and you die gay without repentance you will face the judgment when the time comes for the judgment is withheld right now during this time of grace that's what grace is it's it withholds the judgment to give you that time to repent Let's turn to chapter 7, verse 12 through 13. It says, But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother have a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which have an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, 
Let her not leave him. So now we got an unbelieving, let's say you have an unbelieving wife who is dwelling with the husband. Or the unbelieving husband is dwelling with the wife. And he's specifically <coughs> doesn't believe in the truth of this script. What are you to do? He's telling you not to leave. See, for the unbelieving husband or wife is sanctified by the wife or the husband. An unbelieving Okay, vice versa. Let's just read verse 14. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. So, let's say if your wife doesn't believe that the Most High won't let gay people into heaven. But you know for a fact, you believe in the script, and you reading it, and you know that they're not going to be in the kingdom of heaven. Well, it's telling you here, through you, the wife is sanctified. And vice versa. And during this time of grace, you must continue to show each other these same scripts that are written from Genesis to Revelation until you get an understanding and in time you will both understand the truth the truth is just plain out from Genesis to Revelations being gay is an abomination being a lesbian is an abomination if you don't repent and turn from that during this period of grace you're going to face the judgment after you die you're going to face that judgment turn to Mark chapter 10 Mark chapter 10, 6 through 9. Because you can't just read a few verses. There, there's plenty of witnesses throughout the whole Bible that bears witness to what's going to happen to those who die in their sin. Die being gay. Mark chapter 10, starting at verse 6. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And they twain shall become one flesh. So then they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. There is no commandment coming from the Most High. That says if God put together man and man, or in this instance, shall a man leave his father and mother for another to cleave to his man, or for the woman to leave her father and mother and cleave to a woman. That is out of order. That is confusion. That is against the Heavenly Father's order. He is a God of order. Let's go to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. Chapter 1, verse 9 through 10. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. If there is a righteous man, he's walking in all the ways of the Most High. Then the law of sin and death ain't for him. He's already walking righteously and holy. It's in him to, to be righteous and holy and walk with the Most High. But what it says here, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for the sinners, for the unholy 
and profane, for the murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. So, I've read Paul's letters, and there is nowhere where Paul has said the law is done away with. That particular thing is a man-made doctrine based on one verse. I mean, how can you take one verse and corrupt the whole Christianity with one verse? Because the, the souls of men are wicked. Here's the verse that they use to destroy the law mostly. This, the, this is one of the verses. Romans chapter 10 verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Where in this does it say that the law is done away with? It's gone. If you read the whole chapter, you'll get an understanding of what he's talking about. You will know he wasn't saying that the law is done away with. You don't have to do it no more. It just says, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believe it. And if you understand what we just read, um, where it says that the law is not made for a righteous man, but only for the lawless and disobedient, you can understand what Paul is saying here. He never was speaking on the behalf of the Most High or Yahshua, whom you call Jesus. He was never telling anyone to turn from the laws of God or stop obeying his commandments. Never. Okay, let's move on to some more. Romans chapter 1, please. And this is the last place we're going to. Romans chapter 1 and verse 11. For I long to see you, that I may impart. Oops, sorry, that's Romans, Romans chapter 2. Turn to Romans chapter 2, verse 11. Oh, I don't cross myself up again. It was Romans chapter 1, sorry. Romans chapter 1, verse 24 through 27. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also, the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was met and I'm going to read uh, down 29 as well being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud. Don't you see this? All these attributes within the gay community. Haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, 
without understanding covenant breakers without natural affection implicable unmerciful who know in the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them if by this time you have not understood that the most high Yahweh through his son Yahshua created this grace period as a time period for you to get it right with him not the other way around not time period for him to get it right with you but for you to get it right with him and repent which means turn turn from your sins and walk in the ways of the most high from Genesis to Revelations obey his commandments and live I pray that you have been edified and all those who are out there who are gay, lesbian, transgender, bisexual. You have a grace period to pray and fast to be released from these abominable sins that you're doing that is an abomination to him that you may have a chance to see the kingdom or there's a fiery lake waiting for you at the day of judgment when the Most High pulls you in front of him and reviews your life and casts you into the lake of fire because you didn't repent or turn from that sin which you have done. Believe in what is written. Y'all be blessed. I pray you were edified.